Rose succeeded in passing the dungeon interview with Mistress Mommy, a 60-year-old dominatrix who looked like Mother Teresa and talked like Ivan the Terrible. Mommy then introduced Mistress Rose to the dominatrix job description. Mommy gave me an overview of the job. According to Mommy, all clients were a pervert. Astonishing fact! In the United States, there is no common legal term for the range of behaviors generally known as BDSM, bondage, discipline, dominance, submission, and sadomasochism. The correct medical term for the disorders in question is paraphilia. Perverts were sick. I object. Allow me to quote myself. Deviant sexuality is not a personal choice. It is a rebellious act against society. Moreover, nonconformism of such magnitude undermines not only social laws, but the basic socially accepted concept of natural. Freedom is a crime in the existing world order. Statistically, perverts accounted for only 10% of the general population that was bad. Wrong! Underestimated. The incidence and prevalence of paraphilia is unreported due to its society to its social stigma. However, perverts were upset at the politics, so they kept coming regularly. That was good. They were overachievers and had high paying jobs. Good. They were under a lot of stress. Good. And had no fun in their lives. Good. <laughs> no direct correlation between income status, professional development, and sexual preferences has been established. However, the prevalence of financial, the prevalent the prevalence of financial industry professionals in BDSM is a fact and can be best explained by a number of psychosociological factors, such as the, avail the availability of financial resources, the self-acceptance and broad-mindedness associated with higher levels of education, and the anal retentive organization of individuals selecting jobs associated with money, investment banking, hedge funds, brokers, financial advisors, and so on. Some of them perverts were a real pain in the ass and really hard to deal with. Bad, but what can you do? Just to give you an example, Mommy said, the same guy wants to be tied up to the same fucking chair for 35 fucking years. It was the fuck out of me. I hear you, I said. Remember, you're a dominatrix, not a therapist. She'll eat her third cigarette. Don't cure the clients, even though you could. Keep them coming back for more. It's your bread and butter. Most clients think they can take a lot of pain, so we tell them, of course, they can. They actually can't. No, no, but it's their fantasy. We are their fantasy, and we tell them whatever they want to hear. The job is 50% psychology. I have a PhD in psychology, actually. It helps. Oh, wow. What's the other 15? Dominatrix. Acting dear. I wiggled in my chair, regretting my non-existent dramatic talents and minuscule psychology education. I have a lot to catch up on, I said. Never mind. It's common sense, said Mommy. The clients are perverts, but they want to think of themselves as really nice guys. So we tell them they are, right? Right. They were married, mind you, but not getting along with their wives, of course. Their wives could never understand. Then John, George Rich, a billionaire, but his wife, he just bought this bitch a new Mercedes, paid for her plastic surgery, got her membership to the country club. You think she's a precious in? Joe's coprophilia, that is his love of excrement, his ability to make and save money, and his tendency to buy love and sexual gratification are symptomatic of his anal retentive character organization and can be traced back to his toilet training. Freud was the first to openly state the connection between money and feces. Although it's been portrayed in folklore and myths since antiquity, but cleanliness in childhood is often replaced in dreams by avariciousness for money. The link between the two is the word filthy. Mommy waved her pipe as if it were a scepter. No! His wife doesn't like him having sex with a toilet brush! Analytical narrative. When Joe was four to six years old, pre edible stage, he played with his feces when he put on his potty. His mother reacted strongly by hitting him with a toilet brush and making him clean the toilet with it. This traumatic experience was sexualized and turned into ritualistic behavior. The magic touch of a toilet brush turned Joe into a gold digger, figuratively and literally. Of course, Joe also likes to put a bad log on his.
his balls. Well, he comes here and I tell him it's fun. Then I let him do it himself. He's happy as a clam. I say, where is my fucking Mercedes? <laughs> the room was filled with smoke. I looked at the cuckoo clock. Two hours had passed, but no clients had appeared. 